I'm Troy with AMA Wire, and I'm here at TEDMED with Dr. Partho Sengupta, who's using innovation in cardiac imaging to transform patient care. Thank you for coming to talk to us today, Dr. Sengupta. Thank you very much. And so during your talk, I saw the hologram. It's fascinating. <laughs> Thank you. What's the story behind that? How did it come to be? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's a very interesting story. So, you know, I was always intrigued by the heart's uh, function, and I wanted to know the real truth. And it was very in interesting to know that when I arrived in the United States and, and started doing my research, there were close to about eight or more different models of heart function that were existing. And so I started b back onto the basics, uh, went and started doing dissections. And, uh, and then I realized I think the much better approach would be to use uh, a technology like uh, ultrasound or MRI to understand the, the, the makeup of the heart f muscle fiber orientation. And uh, when we started doing those uh, examination, uh, uh, we realized that uh, the muscle fibers and the spiraling arrangements um, were closely linked to how the blood flow was coming in and out and how the energy was getting conserved through occurrence of uh, swirling motion, also called as the vortex formation. So uh, we designed new technology uh, around this uh, vortex formation uh, and the ability of ultrasound to uh, extract the information. But this was highly three-dimensional, so there was a need to better um, sh depict it in, in, uh, in its true three-dimensionality and, and uh, with true perception of depth. And I was mm -hmm. fascinated by um, the entertainment industry using uh, hologram, uh, holograms. Like just miles from here, <laughs> Tupac Shakur shows up on stage with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, <laughs> starts rapping, blows everyone's minds. Right? That's true. I mean, uh, this is not, you're talking about, yeah. uh, this is somewhere along, uh, along the lines of, I think, 2011 or 12, and the American Society of Echocardiography gave this amazing opportunity to uh, present a, a talk, and I said, why not do something creative and mm -hmm. try to show this information in holograms? So, uh, I went to the entertainment industry and it would be hundreds and thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. so, so I crowdsourced the idea mm -hmm. um, and then engineers from um, India, Canada, Europe, we all came together and it, you will not believe it, it was just less than $10,000 and we had the hologram. And that was amazing um, uh, to get that on the stage and, and to be able to show the heart's mm -hmm. function and, and the potential opportunities. And this was back in 2013. Mm -hmm. That was kind of uh, my um, uh, entrance into the field of holography. And, uh, and that really uh, helped spread the message out mm -hmm. uh, very effectively. So that was the background to yeah. how I landed up uh, in the space of uh, mm -hmm. trying to visualize using holograms. So what did you, what did you learn about the heart, about flow, because you talked at, at ASE, first year, um, your mentor came on stage as yes. Obi-Wan <laughs> Kenobi. Yeah, in a hologram, that's true. Which was just fantastic. Yeah. But what did you learn about, about blood flow? Yes, um, well, I think we are still learning, um, but, but this, uh, this really goes into how much uh, uh, time we have spent trying to understand the heart. But the more opportunity you, uh, you have using real visualization techniques uh, like ultrasound and MRI, you closer get to the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth is very beautiful that uh, at least inside the heart uh, on the left side or the right side, the valve geometry and the muscle function, everything is organized for an efficient flow redirection. So mm -hmm. nothing is wasted. So when there is a blood that is coming in and mm -hmm. it's, it's supposed to go out, we know by inertia it will start to rotate. So these rotational forces and the energy and the momentum uh, in this rotational motion is conserved. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you are exercising, for example, these rotational forces provide a quick uh, you know, a mo movement for the blood to come and rotate and come mm -hmm. out of the heart. So this is, this is a very efficient design. Uh, naturally available and vortex is very equivalent uh, and, and, and it's very commonly seen in, uh, in nature and I think it's, uh, it's understanding the heart's function based upon the primary principle of conservation of energy and some of this energy conserving flow structure mm -hmm. um, makes made a lot of sense uh, mm -hmm. particularly it also makes a lot of sense with the valve design like for mm -hmm. example there's a valve called as a mitral valve which looks like a closed French door 
and when it opens up it's got a bigger arm one side arm is much bigger than the other is because it's the blood is attempted to be directed on one direction okay. towards the expulsion into the aorta on one side but it helps conserving the flow energy of an incoming blood flow mm -hmm. and as it is exiting out and this is all very extremely important when you're designing the new bioprosthetic valves uh, how you're going to design how you're going to align it if you don't take into consideration some yeah. of the efficiencies you could see how uh, the natural design of valve is yeah. I mean like for example the aortic valve is mm -hmm. like only 0.15 millimeter thick and it's allowed to have a lifetime sustenance I mean how does that that's amazing beauty. Yeah. I mean so there, there is a mechanism it's the it's very flow efficiently designed mm -hmm. to to redirect the flow. So some of these intricacies now can be understood using ultrasound mm -hmm. and modern visualization techniques. Um, and I'm really uh, fascinated about uh, use of ultrasound because uh, it's, it's, uh, it's small, mm -hmm. portable, can be used in the community. And I, I really feel like uh, when you visualize mm -hmm. Uh, y and then you start making the model. It's a much more powerful way mm -hmm. to interpret rather than you are n you first start modeling up without any information. Uh, so you, you need you need to see a patient. Uh, that's true, and have use a, a stethoscope. That's true. But but I think understanding by direct visualization is much more powerful mm -hmm. for cardiovascular examination. I believe and use a pocket ultrasound that's become uh, uh, very common mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think is, is uh, I'm very very uh, a big fan of using pocket ultrasound and yeah. we've done a lot of work in the community uh, allows a very quick discovery of the underlying problem. So as I say in my in my talk uh, that uh, we need to be able to discover the problem before development of symptoms. Mm -hmm. Uh, because once you develop the symptoms, it's too late mm -hmm. uh, in the disease process, uh, and uh, and uh, there are there there are there's a lot of technology uh, may, may uh, you know I mean you can use different types of mobile health technology mm -hmm. and to reach to that threshold where right, you could trigger the use of an ultrasound uh, to discover the problem before mm -hmm. the symptoms are happening, and this could be something that can be done very cost effectively in the community, and a lot of research is needed yeah. in that area. So. For those who didn't get to see your talk, or for those who haven't seen your ASE talk, what does that look like in practice? So if, if I'm using the hologram, if I'm using the pocket ultrasound, what does that look like even right here, say, if yeah. I were your patient? What would that look like? Yeah, so, um, well, I think the technology is uh, really evolved very quickly. Now, I, mm. I was talking when I was using hologram, this was about three or four years back, and mm. a lot of people like when they saw the presentation, um, uh, it was it was a shock to them uh, because seeing something is uh, like a hologram from the movies. We know yeah. about the movies and all that stuff, but seeing it in live and real time was even more powerful. But now, uh, fast forward three years, within the last three years, now you have uh, technology where uh, you can convert your own desktop computers into a holographic suite. So. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, there is, there is, this technology is going to evolve. Yeah. Still, we are using more, more, more like a holographic model. You use a pair of goggles and you can lift the valve out mm -hmm. of the screen and rotate in the air, just like the way okay. I showed it in my presentation. So yes, yeah, so yeah. you take the ultrasound. So there are, there are different ways to use imaging, therefore. One image, one set of investigation is how you efficiently diagnose a problem. Mm -hmm. that's, that's for quick pocket ultrasound used in the community, uh, at a certain threshold of, uh, you know, clinical presentation, mm -hmm. or when other tests are suggesting that it will be useful, you use that appropriately. Of course, okay. it's very important to have an appropriate use. Uh, uh, so use ultrasound, and then, if you find that there is a structural problem or something that needs to be done, uh, then you start bringing the world of computational modeling, which involves. Uh, it's very interesting, and it's all mm -hmm. already there. Uh, you can use three-dimensional ultrasound in institution which is currently clinically mm -hmm. used. You take the images uh, from the true dimensional ultrasound and then you can have them seen in front of you as a hologram which allows you much better interaction with the three dimensional mm -hmm. anatomy because you're not no longer rendering based upon just mm -hmm. the colors on a flat screen. Yeah. So you have the entire three dimensional structure floating in front of you. So you can do the surgical planning, you can bring in valves, try to 
you know, you can do all kinds yeah. of computational algorithm on that image mm -hmm. in three dimensionality, in its full three dimensionality. So it would be right here, right in front and of you. It will be rotate. It you can rotate it around. You can uh, work on it. You can play on it. Yeah. You can y you can do your surgery on it. You can put an outside valve put into it. Wow. Uh, and and create your solutions. Okay. So uh, and you can and you can you can forecast the problems. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the this is the. Uh, era of machine learning mm -hmm. uh, where uh, if the model is right and if it's well tested and, and well curated it mm -hmm. can be extremely accurate mm -hmm. you can you can land a rovers on surface of Mars and why can't you do a <laughs> surgery more <laughs> creatively and effectively yeah. so that's where we have to uh, reduce that gap in science mm -hmm. uh, we need to be more accurate and more um, uh, better able to predict the outcomes mm -hmm. by developing realistic model and my whole intent is that this field of uh, cardiovascular imaging or cardiovascular science, uh, we need to shrink the time to discovery of the problem. Mm -hmm. Right now we spend a lot of time just doing tests. Because you said how many years did it take for you? Four, five years? Yes, so, so just to understand research, uh, yeah. the, the research. But we are, it's an exponential trend now. Mm -hmm. I mean, exponential is like t the time is shrinking very rapidly. So technology is evolving very rapidly. So if you curate it correctly, in a, we need to spend less time on discovering the problems mm -hmm. and then spend more time on solutions. So I need to be able to give a personalized solution. I, it's, it should not be one stop uh, type of a design for everybody. Mm -hmm. you, I need to be able to take into consideration an individual preference, individual geometry, individual mm -hmm. variations and be able to personalize. And that's why the hologram works so well because that's it. If we did the ultrasound of me, that is my heart. That's your heart. Of my chest. That's, that's your heart. You can, yeah. in fact, if you have your heart you, you, and you had some hearts, uh, uh, or some of this images stored over a period of time, you can mm -hmm. see how it progressed, and you can make your deductions uh, based upon, uh, or bit based upon how the changes are happening of mm -hmm. what would be needed for you to stay healthy. Uh, you can, in fact, if you knew that you had a valve problem, mm -hmm. which is not completely abnormal at this stage, but you could spend, you can discover that problem early, spend like three or four years of your life yeah. knowing that you have to do something uh, uh, later down or, or modeling out the solution. How do mm -hmm. I work on it? How do I reduce it uh, so that it doesn't progress rapidly? What, so, you know, knowing the problem upfront and spending more time on solving the problem. Mm -hmm. Right now, we, we don't have much time for unsolving. In fact, we get the patients very late. Yeah, they're in heart failure. That's I think that's not the paradigm. That's that's very expensive it's paradigm. Too late. Yeah, we need to be able to get very early mm -hmm. work on our risk factors, uh, preventive strategies, and, and identify subclinical diseases mm -hmm. early on so that if they are reversible, try to reverse them. If not, retard their progression, mm -hmm. and and take and create personalized solutions and mm -hmm. be well prepared for mm -hmm. some of this. Uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, options that would be uh, very cost effective down the stream. So how do we do that? What do we, what do we need to shrink that time? Right. Is it funding? Uh, well, I think, uh, uh, I think it's the, most of the time, I, I think when there is a problem, it's, if it's an engineering problem, mm -hmm. it's very easy to solve. Okay. Most of the time, the problem is not an engineering problem. Mm -hmm. The most of the problem, the human mind is a problem. <laughs> so I think we have to embrace technology. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to be skeptical about technology and test it very uh, for its accuracy. But mm -hmm. we we need to embrace the technology. There needs to be a, a, there's a very urgent need for uh, understanding how best some of these technologies can be utilized. Mm -hmm. And in fact, for example, I work very closely with the American Society of Echocardiography. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have expressed a great intent and there are innovation platforms, there are innovation prizes, there is mm -hmm. a, I'm chairing this year actually their innovation uh, prize. Uh, uh, so we, I think innovation is, is, is a key aspect of, of mm -hmm. our, our uh, uh, scientific uh, engagements right now. So yes, uh, innovate, utilize uh, the new technology, test them out. Mm -hmm. uh, and there has to be prioritization done to types of uh, research that will be more yielding. For example, if there's a pathway that is understood uh, that could reduce the, the time to diagnosis and mm -hmm. give you better outcomes, I think you need to prioritize those kind of research and, 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 and be able to incentivize people to utilize mm -hmm. technology in those ways. Well, that's great. And I know 
I've been waiting for it too, that they're all waiting for you to just kind of disappear <laughs> right now. But he's not, he's really here, I can see him. Um, but thank you so much for thank doing you. this with us. Absolutely. Um, I love hearing about your work. Yeah, it's really enjoyable. And yes, it, thank the you. The talks will be um, online, I believe, uh, shortly. Yes. And so you can see some of the great new things that he presented. Oh, it's, it's, you know, and more, of, more uh, I, I would have to admit that it's not just me. It's yeah. the enthusiasm of all the people mm -hmm. who believe in technology. And I, I've been very blessed and I've been very fortunate to have company of really wonderful industry partners, societies, mm -hmm. and institution, my home institutions, and uh, people around me. They have been extremely encouraging. And I think that's where uh, uh, creating that. Um, that mindset of change is extremely mm -hmm. important and I've been very fortunate to be amidst this change that's happening right now. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Great. Appreciate it.